coming to the morphology you see uh, the grain kernel uh, out of uh, the three major components the outermost component is of course bran which is almost around 14 percent and uh, that uh, the function of it of course to protect the seed and it contains almost whatever 90 percent of the fibers are there in bleed 90 percent of it are there uh, present in the uh, bran for the bran portion itself of course the mineral and vitamin uh, matters are there in bran portion uh, endosperm portion the white portion which is inside uh, the bran uh, uh, it is the storehouse of uh, energy we can say uh, almost uh, whatever the carbohydrates are the percent of the carbohydrates are there in uh, endosperm as well as the protein so you can see here there is no fiber here in the endosperm portion and uh, the third portion is germ which is high very high in antioxidants and vitamin e particularly and very rich in the fat content so whatever fat content of wheat is there is mostly concentrated in the germ portion and if you see a little bit uh, in deep, uh, there is one layer called as aileron layer. Aileron layer is the layer which is uh, actually the part of endosperm, and uh, but which is very near to the bran portion. So actually, if we say it, we can separate the endosperm and bran from that uh, aileron layer. But this aileron layer is very very uh, rich in all the mineral contents and all. So the ash content of the floor if we produce depends upon how much aileron layer which is coming inside. And when you take out uh, in uh, when you take out the maida from the roller floor milling and all, so that's the reason you can clearly say clearly see that the difference between the fiber content and uh, mineral content is lost out almost three times whatever the nutritional or my particularly micronutritional or the macronutrient particularly fiber there is a three times difference between maida and atta so that is the reason they call it uh, the difference always there is the debate that maida is not good for health and all but that is not the case actually because we remove we know that we are going to remove the bran and germ in this process so we did do uh, maida right so we are aware of that process so basically uh, why we remove uh, bran particularly is to take out the uh, fiber content right so we will otherwise end up into the ash increasing the ash content about particularly fiber and the mineral content and all so that is the reason we we end up losing the fiber portion as well as the mineral portion there but when 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 if aluron layer and bran layer comes in and we try to like say we want to make a bread out of whole wheat flour we cannot get the uh, the proper gluten network because it will be cut by the fiber or that bran content and all so that is the reason the requirement of that particular products make the wheat to be processed into either refined wheat flour or atta nutritional content can be always managed with the through choosing the proper proper food habits like uh, we never eat bread as such white bread as such and we always eat with like with the spread of jam and all so which is a very high uh, source of fiber because it comes from the fruit sources and all similarly sandwich all green leaf and vegetables will be stuffed there right so it's always about uh, making the proper choices so one cannot just directly say that maida is bad for health or atta is good for health and all of course when it compares these two products the difference is there in the nutritional content but that is particularly for special purpose they are being processed into different uh, uh, floor different kind of floors again uh, uh, the, it is listed the uh, different nutritional contents uh, and it's spread among the different parts of the wheat uh, is uh, given here uh, so whatever i said it is just all the gist of it is given here so if you see endosperm portion mostly whatever uh, components of uh, endo, uh, carbohydrates is present there and you can see the carbohydrate percent of bran is 63 percent but overall percentage of bran is only 14 percent so it will not add up for the endosperm portion but if you see the fiber portion in bran, it's very high, 43% among all the components. So that is the reason it, it is a major source of fiber there. The similarly, uh, fat is very much uh, higher in germ and all. So overall, if you see, this is how we can end up uh, with the different constituents altogether. And uh, taking out one of the parts of it will make a huge difference in the nutrient aspect of either flour or samolite. Okay, moving to now cultivation, uh, almost uh, uh, every year we produce almost 100 million metric tons of wheat. Out of that, uh, these are only six states which uh, uh, cultivate 90% of the total wheat we, what we produce in, in India. So, UP ranks uh, among, uh, among all the states uh, top, uh, followed by Punjab, Haryana, MP, Rajasthan, and Bihar. Overall productivity of wheat is 3.1 tons per hectare, which is very good because uh, uh, world uh, average is 3.2 tons uh, per hectare. 
Uh, but if you see the states of Punjab and Haryana, they are having very good productivity or yield for that matter, which is almost uh, about four tons per hectare. But UP, as we all know, the state is a very big state, uh, and the, so is the land which is poor, which goes under cultivation. So that makes UP to give, give out um, more quantum of wheat and making it the number one uh, producer of wheat. Globally, if you see, uh, China ranks number one uh, with almost 120 to 130 million metric tons uh, wheat uh, every year, uh, followed by India, we are number two and contribute almost around 12 to 15 percent of the total world wheat, uh, whereas China contribute almost 18 to 20 percent. If you see the other countries, they 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 switch uh, their ranks every year here and there, uh, but India and China uh, maintain their ranks. What you can see by the cultivation uh, quantity also. But if you see the table, uh, Australia, Canada, and USA, they are among one of the major exporters of wheat, unlike China and India. The reason behind it is one is the population. Uh, so the requirement among within that country itself is more uh, in China and India. And other countries, because of the less population, so less demand is there for that particular crop, as well as their eating habit. Uh, they like like in India, suppose we go Western or uh, Northern India. People uh, day in day out they depend upon the wheat based products okay right from the breakfast like say upma puri or chapati kulka and all and if you come towards eastern and uh, southern uh, states uh, day in day out again they depend upon the uh, products which are made out of rice like uh, right from morning indi those are to whatever uh, rice or uh, some sambar they eat so majorly uh, that food habit goes there but unlike other countries like what I just named their food habits uh, not they don't depend upon one single crop. Apart from which, they also consume a lot of uh, corn or barley for that matter. So again, that demands uh, goes on for their internal consumption. So uh, of course, uh, and other other factor is quality and the rate of the international uh, commodity. What is going on? So it makes them the major exporters. The other three countries, what I just said. Now see the, the this table itself will tell you the importance of wheat. It can be consumed in a lot, lot many kind of products, right? Um, only from one year. If you see, just I'll just give you one example. Say like there is one crop called ragi. Ragi, it can be just made into ragi ball or maybe in the porridge. Similarly, jawar. Normally, what we make out of it is just only uh, bhakri, right? So unlike and similarly in any other crops also. But if you see wheat. It can be processed or rather milled into many different uh, milk products, which can be used again for many different uh, uh, food products, right? So I just listed some of it and given that description. So basically, wheat flour, which uh, we call it, and uh, normally now our process has also told to use for refined wheat flour for maida. When we speak of maida, we should use refined wheat flour. And when we use atta, that time whole wheat flour should be used. So uh, the top one is maida. So you can see the products, what all it can be made. And these are just few, few products of what I listed here, which are among the more largely consumed products. Similarly, for non durum samolina. Non durum samolina means the samolina which we take out from our regular rice of wheat in the rural portions. Of course, the noodles, pasta, I mean, noodles, upma, and halwa are the products out of there. And resultant data. Resultant data is the product which comes out of rural flour mill. Normally, those are used in our uh, dhabas and all, for the tandoori roti and all. Which is not uh, maida or not even the whole wheat flour. It is somewhere in between, mixture of under form as well as the uh, bran. Whole wheat flour, of course, uh, our chakki ground data. Uh, so that gives chapatis, parodas, puris, right? And uh, yeah, of course, many other things. And durum samalina, particularly uh, this one, uh, may, mainly only for the pasta. And there is one product called as paukas, which is mostly consumed in, I think, USA and African countries. So that is not more popular like the pasta, which is globally uh, eaten. So these are the different products what we can make out of for one particular grain. Sir, going good, sir, so far? Anybody? Irana, sir? Yes. Yes, yes. All good, yes. everybody is uh, uh, I mean, listening to me. I mean, uh, I'm audible to everyone, right? No? Yes, yes, you are yes, 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 audible, sir. Right, thank you. Yes. And I also, if any, if any questions are there, they, may, they can fit in the chat box and uh, after maybe some slides, we can stop in between to address those questions. Yes, uh, yes, 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 y
All right. Uh, so now, as I told you, the miller or the processor will look for certain characteristics uh, for producing that particular flour. So if you want to produce, uh, suppose the miller is there and you, he has a demand for a bread flour or biscuit flour, and so he has to choose that particular wheat variety, which can give you give him uh, the start uh, starting raw material for processing it into the flour, which the baker or the end users is demanding. So if you see, uh, the baker is demanding a bread flour. Uh, the criteria which goes is the protein content and the grain texture, right? And the gluten strength, uh, normally what uh, uh, he looks for is the strong and extensible. So, we have to start with that particular wheat variety. Then only you can make a good floor out of it. Otherwise, if it starts with a softer floor, it can't give you a floor which is good for the bread floor. So similarly, for chapati, medium extensible wheat is needed and the protein content is between 10 to 13 percent. The pasta products, as I told you, very strong gluten uh, strength is needed and protein content uh, higher about 13 percent strong gluten strength is needed because the pasta is the product which is excluded excluded so it, it, it uh, undergoes a very high pressure right so it has to withstand that pressure so that is the reason we need a uh, very strong uh, semolina or uh, gluten uh, strength to start with uh, so that's how uh, miller chooses the different wheat varieties to satisfy the different end users the processing or rather milling of wheat, uh, it can be done in three basic uh, uh, ways. One is the roller floor milling. Roller floor milling, the major component is the maida or the major product is the maida. And uh, samolina and resultant tata as well as bran are the byproducts. Uh, whereas, and, and of course, the yield of wheat floor uh, or maida in roller floor milling is somewhere around 70%. Samolina, we can take out uh, around 5 to 6%. Resultant tata, somewhere around 2 to 3%. And bran, which is uh, the outermost portion, what we take out, and normally this bran will go as a cattle feed or animal feed that will come around 14 to 15 percent. Whereas, uh, similarly, in durum milling, the, of course, the process uh, used or the, or the machinery used is the roller mill only, but here the major uh, byproduct is samolina. So, like here, we, we target to produce more samolina, and that will be somewhere around 63 to 68 percent is the samolina that is the major product out of the durum milling. Durum floor will be somewhere around 67 percent and the remaining will be bra. Whereas the third way of grinding is it grinding it into stone chakki or uh, rather uh, chakki atta what you call it. So here of course all the product should be wheat flour. So atta contains all the constituents of the uh, grain, uh, bran, uh, germ as well as the endoform. So unlike durum and uh, maida, uh, the processing is different. So I will now uh, go to the two different uh, processes what we have. One is uh, wheat uh, milling process. Uh, so before that, um, uh, I think I should uh, stop it because after this I will be talking two processes of uh, this one. So uh, I think we will take break, break for uh, uh, question answers. Sir. So somebody should uh, coordinate here. Any questions so far? Otherwise, I'll be only talking, I'll feel sleepy after some time. So, I think it's a good way to interact in between. Uh, participants, uh, you can ask the questions. And I think, sir, uh, one, uh, one participant, I think Sudhir is that person who is uh, asking that when buying wheat variety from the market, how do we determine the variety? Any equipment to determine the variety? Okay. Uh, okay, you see, uh, in India, uh, I, I told you the wheat varieties are developed based upon the, uh, I mean, to suit the farmers or climatic conditions for that matter, right? And uh, in India, even there is no wheat grading, like particularly in Australia and US, there is a grading of wheat, the concept of grading of wheat is there. So, grades are decided based upon one is the impurity, second one is the protein uh, content and the other parameters like calling number, right? right? So, and uh, the difference between the farming which goes in India and this goes abroad is in India, there are so many, so many uh, farmers with small, small lands. Like a farmer can even have one acre land, half acre land and all, right? So, there is no similarity. Even if you see, say, you are in say, Kolapur, Kolapur region, right? So, Kolapur region uh, will have uh, a certain variety which was developed for that particular region based upon the soil quality or the climate which uh, it receives or the rain quality it receives for that particular time period of uh, during uh, so growing uh, or cultivation of the wheat. Right? So, even in say two farms, nearby near farms, right? So, the wheat variety given will be same which is developed for that particular region. 
so the agro uh, practices the agriculture practices uh, what they follow like uh, say uh, pesticide uh, or or maybe another uh, uh, removal of weed and all so the practices what two farmers uh, uh, adopt are different so even with the same variety in the similar region we we don't get the two wheat which are of similar quality so it is very difficult to choose the wheat to this to buy wheat based upon the wheat variety in india and millers in the milling capacities are minimum 100 tons per day right so we need a very huge huge quantum of wheat when a miller processes that for the this one so normally the wheat is bought when a miller buys a wheat he buys region wise say like mp lok one or uh, rajasthan lok one or within rajasthan also there are different uh, like uh, districts and all so wheat is bought not on variety but on the regions is it clear mr sudhir Participant, you can ask the question. Yeah. So these participants are uh, faculties or students also. I mean, uh, okay. the, fact, the, the, the participants who are all here, they are from what background? They are students or they are faculties from different universities? How it they are faculty. Okay. Okay. So they are uh, faculty, industrialist, and uh, even faculty from assistant to professor level. Which okay. students are there? Industrialist mainly from the food and some allied adults. So wow. it's completely mixed uh, participant uh, are there. Fine. They are also with various language and states. Okay, okay. fine. Fine, I think uh, Sudhir, uh, I cleared your doubt. Thank you. you can yeah, I, I can read that. Yeah, I can read that. Yes. All right. Okay, uh, so let's go to now processing. As I told you, uh, these are the three different ways, and I'll be now talking uh, a bit with roller milling and the uh, chakya milling. Because the durum milling is almost similar to roller flour milling. I'll, I'll tell the difference also while I'm speaking. So now the first process is the roller flour mill process. You see now this roller flour mill process. Uh, there is one question from Mr. Mo Dr. Mohan Kumar. Yes, sir. Are there are any variety of GM wheat? Is it yes? How to we select from GM crop and non GM? Uh, sir, uh, here uh, in for the millers, GM wheat, wheat is not at all. I mean, first of all, uh, I mean, not tried. No, nobody is uh, doing uh, milling for GM wheat and all. And GM crop, uh, particularly, this is against it. You all know this is all going on. So much uh, debate uh, is going on there. Millers, nobody uses the general uh, GM wheat uh, as of. Well. That's what I can say uh, right now. And how can we select nutritious healthy wheat? Okay, ma'am. Uh, this uh, nutritious healthy wheat uh, mostly so when we when we look for wheat, what what is the wheat use actually wheat among the cereals? Uh, when we look for one thing is the basic thing is this it is a staple food. So whatever energy required for the day is what we look for that particular crop. I say rice and wheat. And protein content is the second thing. Okay, so nutritious wheat uh, is uh, nutrition. When you talk of nutrition, there are only two things uh, wheat can give. One is fiber, and one is protein, right? And apart from the some uh, antioxidants and all which are there in uh, germ portion and all. So for that, we have to eat the whole wheat art. Okay. Now the thing is, the thing is now um, nutritious healthy wheat. So I told you, I gave you the background of how the wheat varieties are chosen. It depends upon the product what you are making. So based on that, the protein content also I have shown you, you in the previous slide here, uh, here, here, that what if you are looking for certain product, how much protein content is uh, needed. So it doesn't mean that suppose if you put, uh, say, uh, nobody stops you from putting some bread wheat to a biscuit uh, flour and all. So we end up having eating a more protein content, but a good bread cannot be made from the biscuit flour. So to select what is uh, what product you are going because uh, of course you are not going to eat uh, just in the form of flour you are going to process it and for that the gluten uh, see the, the uniqueness of wheat is I told you is the gluten forming proteins that is the uh, gluten and, and, and again and I, again I am telling I am using the word gluten forming proteins there is no gluten as such in wheat there are gluten forming proteins which are gliadin and gluten gluten network is formed only when we make it into dough and that gluten network helps to give the extensibility as well as the uh, the strength right so when the bread is made 
so that strength of the gluten uh, will uh, help the the gas which is uh, developed during the fermentation process to hold it and that is the reason we get the good uh, low volume of bread when you use a particular flour which is uh, high in protein content yes uh, that was for uh, dr sumitra madam dr mohan kumar where is the uh, lucan in develop uh, lacuna in developing uh, gen genetically modified bread so th sir, this let's 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 uh, uh, let's skip this because this is debatable and i am not the right person to answer this sir uh, i am sorry about it dr mohan uh, please excuse me for this uh, question please okay uh, so Jim what market yeah, again market. Uh, sir I, i would say the same thing uh, for gmt ma'am also please let's not go to uh, genetically modified is good bad and all let's let's stick to the uh, processing aspect of it is it okay uh, yes no more sir thank you for that uh, same thing i request for gnt ma'am to apart from that anything whatever whatever i just i just uh, i spoke uh, i think that will be good to go with this uh, lecture one more question sir is gmt uh, marketed in india yes sir yes i told to her uh, gnt ma'am and she would like to Yeah, fine. Yeah. Fine. Moving further now. So now let's take, now now let's stop these questions for now. Let's now uh, see the oral oral process, and again we'll take a break for the questions. Uh, now roller floor being process. Now mo mostly we are. Uh, yes, Doctor Mohan, I'm coming for that. I'm coming. I'm coming to that particular question of beta beta and all the in the subsequent slides. I'm coming to that. Uh, so I request all the participants now. Uh, let's let's uh, uh, move forward. Uh, uh, please don't comment on the chat box uh, right now. I'll I'll stop for it uh, for the questions. For the, when I, when I finish with this uh, roller milling process, you understand this now. The roller milling process, unlike the stone chakki plant, where we 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 are very much uh, aware of it. We, we, any every neighborhood stone chakki plant will be there. So very simple process there. Actually, we just put the um, Put the wheat and get the uh, flour right uh, in the chakki jar also. So that is the other process, the roller flouring process, which uh, is used for mostly for the production of maida. Okay, and this uh, uh, what you call the flour mills. Are, I told you the capacities range from minimum 100 tons per day to to about 2,000 tons per day also. The uh, plant capacity range. So it's a very very big um, establishments. And the process contains uh, consists of majorly the principle which uh, involve uh, involve there is gradual scraping and sifting using a pair of chilled cast cast iron rolls which are shown in this picture. So these are the um, chilled cast iron rolls uh, which are used in this roller mill. Uh, the uh, picture on the right. Can you guys see my the cursor I am moving? The cursor is visible or no? No sir. No, okay, fine. No problem. The, the picture on the right, uh, the the uh, wherein uh, roll uh, distance adjustment at the door is done. That is called as roller mill. Inside which uh, these rollers, which are on the left hand side, they will go in the pair. They will go in the pair inside it, right? So this is what the uh, actual grinding mechanism is. Okay, for the roller mill. I'll explain you how it works now. Now there are uh, two pairs, uh, two different type of roller uh, roller system. One is the break system, and second one is the reduction system. Uh, brake system will have the grooves. You can see the picture here. There are the grooves on the brake rolls, whereas the reduction rolls are very uh, plain. Uh, they, uh, they don't have grooves on it. Okay? So those are the difference in the uh, brake system and the reduction system. I'll explain you the difference here. Okay. Now understand this. I think I should start my video. I just try to explain those. Um, now see, you have seen the grain. You have seen the grain, right? Uh, this is this was your grain in, in rubber roller motion. We'll come to that, sir. One minute. You see, this is your grain. Can you can you see me? This is the grain, right? Now, our outermost portion is your bran, okay? And our target endosperm is inside. So this makes a little bit complication. Whatever the complications are there, it is because of that. Okay. So now, in atta, what we do is just grind whole thing and we get the flour. Okay. Now here, the I mean the the actual difficulty is to access the the 
the target target here is the endosome portion so for that we have to make it visible so first thing simple thing i'll try to make it very simple now what we do is we just cut open the grain we just cut open the grain so that your your endosperm is visible and what we do is suppose this uh, is open now and uh, is open now and we keep on scraping the endosperm keeping this bran intact this is bran okay endosperm portion is, is there we keep on scraping it we take out all the endosperm okay and then address it means we either make the chlor out of it or we either make uh, semolin out of it okay so this is what uh, a simple uh, thing is and keeping the keeping the bran intact we don't want to cut the bran okay this bran has to be intact otherwise if it cut it will come to your come to your floor and i told you if it, the bran comes to your floor your uh, when you process it further for the bread and all your gluten network will be cut okay so we don't want any bran contamination here so this is what the the this is what the process is okay now if you see uh, wheat the the wheat uh, what it comes uh, is uh, is with the moisture content of somewhere around uh, 9 to 10 percent 9 to maybe 10 11 percent also in i am talking of the indian trend class now and this uh, and when you have to process the wheat into roller floor milling there is one process called as conditioning okay before we start milling there is one process after of course after cleaning uh, all the cleaning we do for the improving the uh, separation and all uh, using different machinery so when the when the uh, wheat is clean by removing all the bigger smaller impurities stones and uh, dust everything is removed then what we get the clean wheat uh, the, the, the in between step is the conditioning conditioning is nothing but addition of water we take the moisture percent moisture content of the wheat from around 9 to 10 percent to about 15 to 16 percent okay we add the water based upon the calculation what we make and uh, we add the water uh, to take it to 16 percent and we store the store that wheat for conditioning in the conditioning bins which is somewhere around 24 to 36 hours based upon the hardness of the wheat okay so during that time what will happen from the bran portion the, the moisture will go till the center portion and the overall percentage of the moisture will go to, from 10 to 16 percent now now the objective of addition of this water uh, or this process rather the conditioning process is to toughen the bran okay uh, we make the bran tough so that it won't get break during this break system at all and to mellow down the endosperm so that it is easily ground into mice at all so that is a very important step and which is uh, uh, the hard or rather the very whatever the critical step in the processing of uh, uh, wheat into uh, roller mill uh, further to maida okay so that step and taking addition and conditioning time are very 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 important factors but of course with the overall experience of the millers and all 16 percent moisture and 36 percent uh, conditioning time is what uh, is been best suited for the wheat variety what we get in India and when we are processing the wheat for uh, bread flour and all okay of course when we process it for, uh, for soft flours like biscuit and all that time wheat will be different the conditioning um, uh, moisture we will take it somewhere around 15 percent and the conditioning time uh, will be around only 24 hours the different bits between the conditioning time for the hard wheat and the soft wheat okay you see now when we uh, the hardness of the wheat uh, uh, is depending upon the how the st stars and gluten uh, or, or, or the, how the stars and protein are intactly bound within the endosome portion in hard wheat they are very closely bound so the water penetration will take more time from the bran to come till the center of the endosome right so it will go very slowly unlike in the soft floor uh, sorry soft wheat the, there, there are many cracks the endosperm in the endosperm the stars and the uh, protein are not very tightly bound so because of that there are minute cracks there minute cracks there within the endosperm so because of these cracks it will act like a capillary action so the movement of the water is very fast uh, compared to the hard wheat and all so here we don't need much more uh, conditioning time as compared to the uh, hard wheat okay so, so that, 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 that makes the difference between the conditioning time uh, for the different wheats okay now after conditioning you now wheat is ready for uh, your grinding which uh, wherein the first step is the break system the break system also is not only one okay as you can see this you see the break uh, floor the normally the break uh, will have a uh, uh, length of 1000 mm or 1200 mm but mostly use this 1000 mm length and 250 mm tire 
and these two roles will not uh, and of course there are few tangles and all so right now you don't worry about the other details and all these two roles will run in a different direction in the opposite direction the opposite direction with different speed the speed difference is uh, which called as differential which is minus 2 2.5 this speed difference uh, will act like one one drone which is moving slow let's say 100 uh, rpm and other one is uh, at say 250 rpm the small the slow drone will act like fo uh, folding the grain and other one will like scrape it but of course you can say that uh, let's uh, one roll will be uh, idle uh, not moving but in that case what will happen the product will not move uh, down so that is the reason the slow ro roll also should be moving so otherwise and if the, the differential is uh, not there, if the, both the rolls are running at same speed, what will happen? They will not be scraping. They will be like making the flex of weight. Okay, so that is the reason the differential uh, should be there in the uh, uh, in the brake system. Now what I will do is I will take you fine. You see now this will be the flow sheet actually. Now, when the grain kernel comes uh, into the uh, first break, okay, what will happen is we cut open. Uh, what we what we do is we cut open the grain. Uh, that means our aim is was to really cut it into two parts, okay, but it won't uh, happen like that, right? There will be some small particles uh, will be generated. There will some semolina kind of particle will be generated. Will be, of course, the bran will be there, and there will be bran with the uh, attached endosperm and all. So different uh, kind of uh, material we will we'll get from a single phase there. So this has to be this has to be separated. Now this separation happens based upon the size, and in the machine called as planting. This is the this is the machine. Okay. So this is the machine which is called as planting. So this each compartment what you are seeing the red uh, the, on the left hand side uh, there are these different compartments which are uh, uh, specified for the different uh, systems like break one break two break three uh, break four and and so on okay so what happens here is actually so after the wheat is ground in the first break it will send through the pneumatic lift to the plant sector okay so plant sector and plant sector you can see here there are different uh, uh, set of sieves what we use the different set of sieves normally what we use is thousand micron 500 micron 290 micron and the last one which is flowed See, our aim here was not to produce the floor. Our aim here was not to produce the floor or my love, okay. But because now this, uh, because of this uh, weed passing through the brake system, some floor is produced. And one more thing, uh, okay, uh, I will try to explain it here. See, endosperm, uh, sorry, the maida is nothing but the endosperm portion which is divided of bran and germ, and the size should be less than 150 micron. 150 micron. So this is where what is called as floor. It can be anything. It can be anything below 150 micron. Okay. So that is the reason if you see here at all the all the sections, the last sieve is 150 micron, and the through of it, whatever falls through it, is nothing but the floor. So my point of telling you is, when in the first break, our aim was not to produce the floor, but some floor is produced. So that we have to take it out for packing. Because if you keep it, what will happen? Your floor and uh, the end product will keep on, will keep on uh, uh, recycling within the system, and we end up with uh, giving the high uh, power consumption as well as the uh, as well as the low yield for that uh, particular uh, system, right? So whenever your product is produced, you have to take it out. So that is the reason you see in the after the first break, we take out the floor, and this floor is called as first break floor. Okay. Now you see here the top, uh, the top. Uh, what do you call the sieve? The over sieve of uh, the, the size is 1110 micron. So, what will happen? Whatever the top portion is, what will be that? That will be brand with the attached endosperm, right? With the attached endosperm. So, this has to go to the second break. Okay, this will go to the second break, right? Uh, let's understand the break system uh, and only the top system now. What will happen is the top, the overtail of 1110 micron has gone to the second break. Second break again is nothing but the pair of again steel cast iron uh, rolls okay steel cast iron rolls the pair of it but the, the uh, now here what will change is the there, there will be change in the fluid size little bit uh, because now the size has reduced now unlike the first break wherein the incoming stock was weed now here the stock is brand with the endosperm right so the difference will be in the size of fluid which will be little bit small, smaller and the 
and the gap between the rows now. Normally for the first break, the gap kept was somewhere around 0.5 mm, right? For the second break, the gap kept is 0.3 mm. So the what is the role of the now this one is to keep scraping. But of course we are not, uh, and if you observe in this uh, flow sheet here, we are not doing this uh, whole process of scraping in one go. Okay, we are using first break, second break, third break, and the fourth break. Okay. If we do it everything in one go, what will happen? Again, the chances of brand cutting will be more, right? So where scraping is slowly. So that is why this is a very, very slow or a, or a gradual process, which goes with the principle here. What are the principle? First thing, gradual scraping and sifting during using pair of chill cast and iron rows and the sickle, right? So what happens is in the subsequent rolls, okay? Subsequent roll, second break. Same way now. Here also second break. The pair of rows it will go into the pair of rows again uh, what scraping will happen similar kind of products will be uh, produced so again that will go to the plant shifter uh, section of the second break we take out the floor the top portion will go to the third break same way and as it product goes to the fourth break almost what we have done we have scraped up all the all the end of some we have scraped up all the end of some right so now what is kept what is left over is the Brand, uh, yeah, brand, fourth brand. So this is this board. So that's why you see on the fourth break, the top portion is the fourth brand. This goes for the packaging. So this is how we separate the uh, brand from the other portion of it. Okay. Now that was the top seal. The second and the third seal. Uh, the size is around 525 and 290 micro, and it is going to purifier one and purifier two. Purifiers are all same. Purifiers will look like this. Purifiers will look like this. Uh, this is what? This is nothing but uh, the place where Samolina or Rava is uh, Rava is uh, produced. Okay. What will come here? The, the, the stock which comes here is the mixture of clean Samolina, dirty Samolina. Dirty Samolina is nothing but the Samolina with the bran contamination. Only bran, okay. And some bran with some endosperm. Okay. So this all mixture will come here. So our aim here is to pack the clean Samolina. Okay. Now, if you see, if you see, they come, so let's say purifier one, okay, let's say purifier one. So, what stock has come to the purifier one is the stock which is less than 1150 micron and above 290 micron, okay. So, this stock has come inside. So, the size of it is similar, but they differ in density and they differ in the, in their, uh, uh, in their, what do you call, the, the portion, like in the home or the brand portion and all. So, here, what we do is, we take it to the name itself which shows this purification, right? So purifier. Uh, so purification is nothing but in our many terms, it is removal of the bran. Bran is the contaminant, what we uh, uh, look for uh, separating it, okay? So the principle in this uh, uh, machine again is the size as well as the air resistance. You can see on top here, uh, on top here, the circular portion with the wall, the black walls, okay? That is the connection for the air, okay? And uh, in between uh, this to this uh, portion, there are the seals, like the plant shifter, okay? The two layers of seals will be there. Now, what will happen because of the setting of the um, uh, seal sizes and the uh, air, what will happen? The lighter bran and dust will go up, okay? And Samolina, you see Samolina along with, uh, say, only its endosperm and the same size of endosperm along with bran. The Samolina, which is 100% endosperm, will be the one which will have the more density. And being denser, it will be always at the bottom, okay, and it will come come down and get as a tools, okay. So what we do is based upon the density and the size, we separate it out. So the samolina will fall down and we send it for packaging, okay. And with the air walls, what we do is we don't allow the other particles like uh, and uh, samolina with uh, and endosperm with bran or bran with endosperm to fall down, and we take it out as a over test, okay. And those over tests, we send it to again some break rolls which are having very, very small grooves, and those are called as scratch rolls, scratch system. Okay, the second system, scratch system. The so, so role of scratch system is what to separate the endosperm from the bran. It is like just chopping off the bran from that endosperm. Okay, because we don't want to lose that endosperm, and this endosperm again we use it for the for making or grinding it into mina. Okay. Fine. So this was about your um, uh, purification. Okay. 
uh, maida is coming from uh, as you all see the maida is coming from the last tube okay uh, the, the top portions are going to the next break reduction reduction uh, break systems and the center portions are for the purification the difference between purifier one and purifier uh, two is nothing but only the size difference okay uh, the surety rava the small rava what we call with what we use for uh, the sweets and all is used use, is produced in the purifier two and the bolder rava which we use for normally for uh, my and all is produced from the from the top uh, when the purifier one that is the only difference otherwise the principle is same and also if you, if you see here this one machine itself will host the purifier one and purifier two it is divided into two partitions actually one side uh, if you see that will have the different sets of tubes we normally call it as purifier one and the second uh, will be a small final tube that will be called as purifier two so this is how the separation or rather purification happens okay and now the reduction system okay the reduction system is what see now oh, as i told you anything which passes through 150 micron is your flow and anything above let's like, say 280 uh, 250 260 and above up to 600 is all, all your semolina okay but what about that end of form which is in between 150 and somewhere around say 220 or 250 that is that will not fall either semolina or either maida okay Th those or that stop is called as middlings middlings okay it is the intermediate stop which definitely has to be ground into 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 flow okay and that can that is done in the reduction system okay what what is that stop you can see the overtail of 150 micron which here uh, is shown into c2 okay c1 c2 uh, c is the reduction uh, reduction stop like uh, reduction 1 reduction 2 and all. those are the rows which are which are No, not having any any grooves on it the reduction uh, system okay unlike break system they are all plain the role of reduction system is nothing but just to grind it into the smaller size nothing else okay so the stop which is coming from the bran uh, break system as well as the uh, as well as from the purifiers which wherein we are not packed all semolina okay will come to the reduction system again reduction system we see it's all the again the pair of rolls Okay, and the, here the differential between the two uh, two rolls is one as to one point two five. Okay, because we need very slow uh, this one because we we want to make it into fine powder. Okay, and uh, uh, the length of course almost uh, same as uh, same as the break was only thousand uh, mm uh, length and two fifty mm dia. Okay, so these are all the reduction rolls. Let us see the uh, flow sheet of reduction rolls. Yeah, nothing but if you see overall what is there, the, all the sieves will be all the sieves will be floor sieves. Okay, whatever the throw come through, whatever come through that floor sieves is packed as floor, and whatever overtails are there will go to the next uh, next reductions, next uh, reduction like C one C two because all the again all the uh, middling cannot be ground into maida in one reduction, right? So here also uh, there will be a reduction one which is called as C one, then the reduction two C two so on. C1, C2, C3, C4, C5. The five reductions. What will happen? All the stock which is coming from the break system and as well as the purifier, where we are not grinding or uh, packaging at the packing at a, as a semolina, that will come to the reduction roll. Okay, and the reduction rolls will just grind it uh, into uh, smaller size. Again, it will go to the plant sector. Uh, same way, it will have the reduction plant sector sections like C1, C2, and all. So the rolls will be packed as flour. Over time, we will go to the next reduction pack, uh, next reduction uh, roll. So at the end, we end up um, uh, taking out all the semolina, and there will be some mixture. There will be some mixture which is of bran as well as endosperm, which cannot be separated. Okay. So that we take it out as the resultant data, which I, as I told you, the percentage of it is somewhere around four percent. And this resultant data uh, is used only in the dhabas and all. Okay, for the tandoori uh, roti and all. So this is how uh, resultant data is separated, uh, maida is separated, and bran is separated. Of course, there is one more component, germ. Okay. Now germ from the break system because of the size and all, where it will go? It will go to the purifiers, along with the along with the uh, bolder endosperm and all. So from purifier, it will come to reduction rolls. Okay. And now I told you that the, the germ is very high in lipid content and all. So what will happen? It will not get ground in the reduction rolls. It will rather get flattened. It will rather get flattened. Okay. 
it will uh, come from C1, C2 and all. So what we do, it will not get separated as a flow. It will keep on going to the next reduction. So what we do in the third reduction, what we do is we keep one bigger CU size. You can see here in the C3, we have kept one floor, uh, one CU size of 1,120 micron. So what will happen is from that portion, we take out the germ. It will overtake and germ will come out from there. This is how we separate the germ in the uh, roller flow. Plane. This is how we, I told you. Uh, we separate the bra and we separate the uh, resultant data. And, and uh, at the end of this process, the overall overall uh, what do you call overall uh, percentage of uh, the uh, different products is 70 percent maida, uh, 3 to 4 percent uh, samolina, again 3 to 4 percent resultant data, bra is somewhere around 4 to uh, 14 to 15 percent. And germ normally in India, germ has no, no, of course, there is a market for germ, but germ. As such, we cannot just market it because of its high uh, fat content and as soon as it is uh, produced, the life is and then we start acting on it. So the uh, rancidity will start uh, happening. So if at all we have to sell it, we have to uh, treat it. Okay. We have to treat it with the um, uh, heat treatment and all. So that again will lead to the one more pro set of uh, process and all. So normally in Indian milling, unless and there is a huge market, uh, I mean, sorry, and there is a huge uh, premium uh, uh, price uh, is there in the market and all, uh, it will be otherwise back, uh, uh, it will be going along with the brand. Okay, so germ pipe, whatever the outlet is there for the germ, will be mixed along with the uh, brand uh, brand stock. So the, that is where your um, uh, brand goes. So germ normally goes along with the, along with the brand to the category. So this is how your uh, uh, break system, reduction system, and the period of system. Yeah. Um, well. Okay. Now, sir, uh, somebody was asking me about the fortification. Uh, one more question about that. Any developments in the rubber uh, uh, roller machine? You see, rubber roller means are mostly used in the paddock, in the paddock processing. Paddock processing. I told you. These are cheap cast iron rolls. Okay, this needs so much strength and all. If you see the the weight of uh, this one is very high. It needs strength to this one. Rubber rolls will not give the separation uh, because we have to break the row weight into the uh, different sizes and all. So rubber roll uh, are limited to the paddock processing. Here we are using whatever whatever you were we are, we are using are the cast iron rolls, okay, which are made from the different alloys of metals. They are all melted. And then it is you made into this particular uh, uh, shape uh, using the different dies and all. And when these dies are rotating, some of the components like zinc and all, which are very heavy or very uh, hard, okay, those metals because of this uh, rotation, what will they'll be on the top of it, on the, the outermost layer is of this uh, cast uh, uh, metals and all, which are very uh, heavy and all. So that is the reason they are used to make the grooves grooves on it. They need the strength. Rubber rolls, uh, no sir, it's only for the Dr. Shalini is asking uh, audio. Uh, am I audible to other participants, please? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think Shalini is uh, having some other issue. Okay. Any other question was there? Uh, it was about uh, fortification. Somebody asked. Uh, yeah. Again, Dr. Mohan. Uh, uh, okay. This this is a slide uh, which answers your question now. You see what I told you. Uh, um, uh, see, first of all, we take this out from our mind that Maida is bad for health. Okay, I told you the reason. Uh, I told you the reason Maida is uh, produced for the particular reasons, particularly for the baking products, wherein we do we and that too particularly for the products like wherein we need a, a strong gluten network to be intact. Okay, that can be a bread, that can be even uh, if someone is from the southern part of our country, uh, particularly Kerala and Tamil Nadu, they make this product uh, Kerala parotta. Okay, which again needs a very very strong gluten network because they. Uh, make it into different uh, layers and all okay so that means strength so again there if bran comes we don't get that uh, elasticity there okay so that is the reason uh, maida is produced and we all are aware that we we were taking out the fiber there so when you're comparing atta and maida is of course atta is more nutritious but why are we comparing atta and maida okay maida is meant for some different purpose and atta is meant for some different purpose okay now coming back restoration you see uh, a miller, when we remove bran and as well as aileron layer, of course, all the micronutrients are going to go because they are mostly concentrated into, into the aileron layer. Okay, so for that matter, fortification process. Okay, fortification is the answer for that. So there are three ways of 
doing the fortification. Uh, they are divided into three different uh, type of fortification. One is restoration. Restoration is what? The replacement of nutrients lost during processing. So in this case, milling, okay? Uh, we are losing the nutrients uh, by the way of uh, bran removal and all. So what we do, we add the other chemical sources, let's say for iron, we use normally ferrous sulfate, for zinc, we use zinc sulfate and all, okay? So that way, we can always put it back, okay? We can always put it back by the fortification. So we use the fortificants uh, in the chemical sources, we make it into a filler, we use a filler. Normally, the filler will be the middling and all. So where the where the uh, maida is being conveyed, the final product, where the maida is being conveyed, on top of it, on top of it, there is a fortification, the micronutrient doser, okay, this micronutrient doser is dose the micronutrients in a very smaller quantity and in a continuous way. So, on the conveyor, maida is going and on top of it, a micronutrient doser is there, which is uh, adding the, uh, whatever we have selected the nutrients, okay. That is just restoration, wherein we are putting back almost 90% of the uh, flow uh, of the micronutrients back. Enrichment is what? Enrichment is the other way of fortification. Where here, what we do is practice of adding back only those micronutrients that are lost during milling and for which the good evidence of that if deficiency exists. Okay, like say uh, anemia. Suppose if you feel that iron uh, in particular region, anemia is very much uh, prominent there. In that case, what we do, we don't worry about the other micronutrients and all. What we do is we just put back the iron, iron source, or iron, whatever, ferrous sulfate or ferrous fulmarate. Okay. That is called as enrichment. And in general, fortification is what? We are not worried about how much uh, restoration or enrichment we are doing. And we are adding the nutrients, whether they are present in that particular food or not. We are just adding for our, like say, there is no vitamin A present in wheat and all. Okay. So we, when we add vitamin A, what we are doing, we, we are doing this general fortification. Okay. So these are the different ways of doing the fortifications. Uh, Dr. Mohan, uh, is it okay for now? Okay, moving for, okay, some more uh, light on this. Uh, I told you, okay, uh, is it okay, sir, for now? Because I'll be talking also about fortification in the ATA, ATA slides. Dr. Mohan, please. Yes, sir. Fine. Mm, so now moving forward. Uh, mm, so the word the fortification. Now, the second uh, way of uh, the second way of uh, processing uh, the wheat is to make it into atta. Okay, atta uh, is the product or the flour for that matter, which contains all the different uh, parts of the wheat, the wheat, the bran, wheat, the germ, or wheat, the end of Okay. Now, uh, of course, the cleaning should be there to remove all the all the whatever the impurities are there. Dampening here, I, I told you the conditioning wherein we really take uh, the, there was the objective in the roller floor milling. Okay, the objective was to toughen the bran and mellow down the endosperm. Okay, but here actually we do dampening just to make out for the water which is lost during the processing. Okay, uh, I'll come to that point. Uh, in my, okay, now you see. After cleaning, now uh, have you observed when the chakki atta is made and if, uh, by chance if you try to feel the atta which comes out of the chakki stone, okay, it will be too hot, it will be too hot, it will be somewhere around temperature goes around somewhere around 73 to 75 or even sometimes 78 uh, degrees Celsius and all, okay. So, uh, of course, with that heat and all, much of our moisture is lost, okay, moisture loss will be there somewhere around uh, 1.5 to 2 percent. Of course, it is okay when you're doing it at home, okay, because we're not doing it for commercial purpose and all, but suppose for a miller, 2% or 1.5% loss is huge, right? This is where all the profit is been uh, hidden, okay? So, we don't want to lose the that profit, okay? So, for that reason, actually, the dampening or addition of water in ATA is just a commercial for the purpose, commercial purpose, okay? Nothing like the uh, the technical reason what was there in the roller for wheel process, okay? So, we are adding the water here just to make up the loss what we, what we may enter during the processing it into uh, atta using the stone chakis. Okay. Now we can here emery. We can use the uh, emery uh, emery for removal of the bran. Uh, uh, all right. Okay. Now you see here. Uh, you see here now. Now what we are doing is uh, emery. Now um, on uh, in uh, maida, 
we are separating the bran okay so what is uh, the major uh, source of microbial contamination and all flow is the bran okay because that is the surface and if at all any pesticide residue if at all any microbial load has to come it it will come on the top of it okay so the the, the, the bran is the portion on the, the outermost portion right so anyway in uh, during processing into maida we remove the bran but what about atta in atta all bran is going to come as a, your food right so we are going to eat that bran as well so any contamination there will definitely affect uh, the food safety uh, of that floor right so it is uh, much more important here to keep the to clean the surface uh, of the bran okay so for that we normally use emery emery is nothing but the rice polishing machine okay which was there in uh, rice polishers and all so same machine we use it here and we target to remove hardly 0.5 to 1% of the outermost layer of the bran with this what will happen all the microbial load any uh, pesticidal or any uh, insecticidal residues are there on top of it will be going and so that way we are enhancing the food safety of this uh, process is of very much importance here but only uh, drawback of this uh, using emery is, is is the power consumption the power consumption of emery is too high almost 30 30 hp motor is needed okay so the power, power consumption of the whole process goes up okay as such as such the power consumption of the uh, manufacturing atta is very much high compared to the roller flow drill process one thing is roller flow drill process operated at very high capacities and the grinding pressure is low as compared to the stone chip is atta if you see a roller flow drill process to process the whole uh, one ton of uh, wheat into whatever products i said the pro, uh, cost, unit cost uh, the number of units needed is hardly 55 to 60 units per ton whereas the same thing in uh, chakki atta is around 80 units per ton okay so it's a huge you know so most of the uh, requirement of the processing cost is for the electricity only okay in chakki atta so emery again will add to it so depending upon your purpose depending on your market you can choose it to either use it or bypass it grinding of course after emery it will go to the grinding pair of chakkis and we also sift the sift the atta unlike what we do at home or neighborhood chakkis Uh, it is directly sent to the uh, sifter wherein there we remove some bran portion okay 3 to 5% okay now this again the purpose of it is to enhance the shelf life as well as the color if 100% bran is there of course the floor will look very uh, brown in uh, dark uh, brown in color which is which will give which will not give a good uh, appeal for when you uh, chapati or food is are made out of it so that is the reason um, uh we we take out the bra uh, uh, out of uh, even uh, even we call it as volume floor but the practice is to remove 3 to 4% uh, 5 to 5 to 5% bra and that is the reason we use normal word as atta not the volume floor and of course as i told you the the, the, the floor or the atta which is coming from chakki is too hot that is the reason we cannot just pack it like that okay so we take it through the pneumatics there in uh, some of the uh, cooling down will happen and afterwards we store it in storage cellars for 3 to 4 hours to bring it to the normal room temperature before we pack it normally the packaging is done in unit packs uh, wherein we use the material pet p uh, 1 kg 2 kg 5 kg and 10 kg are the unit packs what we normally use otherwise for the bulk production 25 kg packs with the plastic liner uh, will be uh, commonly used so this is the yeah if you see the stone chakki this will also have some bruise okay This will, uh, we also having the bruise okay the red portion uh, which is called as main porous the uh, the blue portion are called as side porous and the actual grinding will happen only at the uh, at the uh, periphery okay at the periphery if you see the stone chakki the diameter of the stone chakki what are commercially used uh, is uh, uh, anything between uh, 24 30 or 36 inches okay so you can, you can see the product will come in the center and travel almost Suppose if it is a 13 inch chakki, almost 15 inches it has to travel. So the contact time is too much. That is the reason the generation of heat is more there. Okay, uh, unlike in a roller floor mill, wherein the contact point is only one layer and that too a fraction of second. But here wheat, uh, the mill uh, intermediate product will uh, stay a longer time here, giving the heat generation. Uh, generation. So the furrows have the different functions which are listed here to shear open the kernel. to transport the product and turn over the product and as well as this furrows will also act like the air channel so little bit cooling of the 
uh, system will be always uh, happening there because of it for, for this uh, happening because of this for us okay so this is what our check at a point if you see if you see the normal check key plants and all it can be anything between 20 tons per 20 tons per day is the ideal plant okay for uh, any new uh, uh, entrepreneur to start the plant 20 tons per day is the at a capacity okay of course there are capacities uh, ranging up to 250 tons per day also so now if you see if i can explain you the uh, flow uh, chakki atta milling in short here you can see there are a b c d uh, whatever the pins okay unlike uh, roller floor milling the three chakki the wheat will go directly into the first second and third chakki because here there is no first break second break third break fourth break and all and we want what just a product to come in uh, and get it into floor okay so initially wheat will go into first second and third same wheat okay same grinding and with all these three uh, it will go combined in one plant sector wherein whatever uh, floor uh, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right to them, will pass through we pack it and whatever overtail has come to further uh, fine grind it it will come to the fourth chapter wherein again it will go to the plant sector and uh, based upon our requirement three to four uh, or three to five percent brand will remove and whatever is the truth Will be mixed along with the uh, the floor or atta from that three per three checkers. Very simple process uh, of it, but of course, uh, very critical uh, in terms of uh, what we have to do is uh, the storage. One thing is storage. The other thing is the other thing is the star damage. Okay. Now one question uh, or rather the discussion here uh, the difference between maida and atta. Now. I told I explained the whole process of roller milling. So somebody can say, sir, suppose if we grind that bran, whatever we had taken out, we just grind it and mix it back to maida and samlin also we grind it and mix it back. Germ also mixed it back. So that will be also called as atta. Nothing wrong in that, right? Technically, it is also a whole wheat floor. And the floor what we grind it in chakki, that is also atta. Uh, if you see the constituent wise, it contains bran, germ, and some. Even the atta which is ground in chakki. And even the now whole wheat flour which were ground by reconstituted. But but the difference you cannot make good chapatis with the roller mill reformulated atta. Okay. The difference is nothing but the stars damage. Okay. The stars damage is the physical damage of the stars uh, component which happens during the grinding process. I told you the in roller milling the contact point is very less. So the stars damage, overall stars damage of that particular uh, floor is not more than 7 to 9%. Whereas in stone chakkis, the star damage is somewhere around 16 to 18 percent, which is uh, 15 to uh, 16 percent, okay, which is very much desired. So that is the reason the chapatis, but whenever we look for chapatis, softer chapatis and all, we always prefer chakki ground data. What will happen because of this star damage? The moisture uh, moisture uh, absorption, okay, will go up, the water absorption will go up, okay. And uh, this moisture will help to keep the chapati softer for longer time. Unlike in the uh, reconstituted floor, where the star damage is very less, the water absorption uh, will be only 60%. Whereas in uh, our Turkey ground atta, the water absorption is somewhere around 70 to 75 percent. So this is the reason actually the difference between the uh, Turkey ground atta and that is the USP of all the atta, particularly when you are making chapatis out of it. Going forward now, what is the trend in the ATA industry going on? Retailers are offering. Now you see, um, now if you see the overall uh, ATA industry, the major players, major players are ITC, okay, mm, ITC, uh, uh, Annapurna, or Pulse Pulse with general example, okay. But of course, the retailers, uh, uh, like say, there are many uh, floor mills on their own. They also started making the chakki ATA because what is all cleaning sections are there, big procurement is there. Only thing is that what they have to put in the uh, four to five chakis additionally. So they started uh, producing the ATA in their own brand. So, what they how they how they uh, fight with uh, this one is that giving suppose ITC is giving say 50 paisa per packet or say one rupee per packet and all. They gave, gave more, more market, uh, more, what do you call the more margin. So, that's how they can lure the retailers to keep their uh, product and, and to uh, fight with the multinational standards. But of course, quality must be there okay it's not that quality is compromised there you have to do quality at par then only you can be the survival in the market uh, retailers like so we go in food bazaar or retail reliance or more and all what they do they also have their uh, they will also have, uh, of course they will have all the attacks and as well as their own brand 
they will not be having their own floor wheel plans and all so what they they just co pack it they just give the they just give the uh, packaging material and it is packed in their name so this how the trend is going on further more uh, segmenting you see you cannot stop at one particular art like uh, giving one example of itc okay that is a red color packet which comes is a is a very uh, i mean common uh, uh, product which is for it as value for money that may come at a cost of maybe 50 to 55 rupees per kg okay but premium quality so, but there will be customers who will be looking for premium quality and uh, i told you in my for, for initial slide that sarbati wheat is among the one of the premium uh, wheat which uh, is uh, considered very good for the chapati mix but it comes at a cost right so there are people who look for that uh, who doesn't mind you know, paying a bit more so itc select the same itc has one more brand uh, brand itc select so that aata comes at a cost of 60 rupees okay but people are there to buy it so the, a company cannot stop at producing only one uh, kind of product right be it any like the parle cannot just stop at parle it has to go with the particular or any other product and they have to do it then there some people look for some health options like where in the multigrain aata will stop multi grain atta is mix of whole wheat flour plus certain grains which are rich in fiber and protein so we select certain grains which are rich in fiber and protein and mix it into some portion to make it a multi grain atta so here what will happen we need not to change our food habit right we are eating the same chapati but we are getting the goodness of higher fiber and higher protein in the same diet what we are eating rapur region specific atta uh, there was an attempt to make uh, sharbat uh, region specific atta like punjabi atta uh the difference was not much but only thing is the difference was the granulation mostly the southern part and all they look for the very fine flour where and uh, towards northern side and all they look for some bit coarser so the only coarse uh, uh difference there nothing else fortification now uh, um, fortification of atta you see now whenever we choose a vehicle we call it a vehicle for fortification like it was done for the uh, eradication of coiter iodine uh, iodine depletion right it was uh, done through fortification into the salt because salt is the commodity which everyone eats right so the reach approach so the reach of it is to each and every individual so that is where wheat becomes the very, very good vehicle to reach out to the large population okay so the micronutrient deficiency can be can be can be addressed using wheat flour as a as a vehicle unlike other grains see if you do it ragi flour fortification it will be limited to certain regions or if you do jowar so it will be limited to certain regions right but wheat is as i told you wheat is one thing which is a global uh, this one and um, almost every uh, person eats it uh, at least in in one meal of the day so what is done is to address this hidden anger uh, the fortification the government has come uh, with this uh, new uh, proposal that instead of giving wheat uh, through this pda system and all Uh, they will give the wheat flour which is fortified okay so with that two thing will happen of course the wheat was given to to address the hunger but hunger uh, just is not the only thing which has to be addressed up to the other will be many different diseases also so for that again government has to come up with different schemes and all so if you fortify the wheat flour and give it through forty uh, through this uh, different government schemes like pds or mid day meal program or any other child development service integrated uh, development programs and all if we give the fortified wheat flour and all what will happen is the two things will be addressed one thing is uh, hunger as well as the this hidden hunger we call it as the micro nutrient deficiency and all so that way it will be of very much useful uh, to address the overall health uh, uh, issues of the uh, population uh what what the government will do of course government will not put its own uh, 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 flour mills at all what they will do they will come through uh, in contact with some in contact with some flour millers and all they will supply the wheat and what is the role of the miller here to grind it uh, into the flour and fortify it at the the process i just told you right and if you see the cost of fortification overall cost of fortification with 3 to 5 micronutrients is hardly 8 to 10 paisa per kg per kg amount including all the machinery the, the uh, chemicals uh, whatever we use it uh, the whole process for consumption man for hardly come to 8 to 10 paisa so it's a very win win situation for the government to address a very big uh, issue of uh, micro deficiency and this is uh, of course government of gujarat uh, was the first one to start it now it's going on in the rajasthan i think jammu kashmir and slowly it will be mandatory for all the states to supply the fortified uh, uh, wheat flour okay and this is where the scope for the millers will come if you see the what is the future of our industry 
Now, if you see whatever ATA we eat, I told you 100 million metric tons of uh, wheat we produce. Out of that, 20 million metric tons goes to roller flour milling industry, wherein maida is the major product. Almost 60 to 80, uh, 60 to 70 million metric tons is used in, in the form of ATA. Products can be different. Products can be parota, products can be chapati, full kind of. But the point is the ATA industry, okay? Uh, out of that, the package branded ATA. Package branded ATA means which will come with the brand, like uh, IT is. Uh, uh, so uh, Ashiva data or HUL's uh, Annapurna technology, or for that matter, Patanjali art and all, which, which comes with the brand and in, in the unit packs. That market is hardly right now four, 3 to 4 million metric tons, and that is growing every year 25%, 25% annually. Okay, the reasons are, of course, with the modernization and the penetration of human employment. So, all both the spouses are working. So, any any uh, time saving product will have an edge, right? And ATA, package ATA is, and just imagine the scope. Uh, uh, 1998 uh, or 1998 uh, is actually the package branded ATA segment started from the Shakti Bhog ATA and the Pillsbury ATA, okay? And in, imagine now we are in 2022. So, how much is been changed? Hardly 4 million metric tons out of 60 million metric tons is in the form of package ATA. And you see the growth 25%. So, this is huge, huge demand, uh, huge scope for converting this 4 to 60 million metric tons, right? So that is what, that is why this all uh, new, new ATA industries are coming up. And of course, the rigorous advertisement uh, helps this product uh, for the uh, marketing. And uh, government's quite <coughs> approach, as I told you, the food formula, the national food policies and all, for participants and all, and uh, with the rise in model return format, increasing disposal per, per income, and health awareness, this category is always uh, in the upswing. So definitely there is a big scope for the floor mirrors here. So yeah, this was all from my side before I take the questions. Questions in the chat box, I can read. Okay, sir. There are some yes. questions in chat box, sir. Dr. Abhijit, uh, sir, more research going on in the mineral and vitamin B itself with the genetic, yes. But major development has been admired in the brand portion of so. Anyhow, if we have improved varieties like those, of course, we should be separating them to the family. How will it address? How is your opinion on this? Please provide insight on free treatments for other ways like parboiling of rice so that vitamin and mineral migration will happen. Of course, the parboiling process itself is, uh, is meant for the migration of minerals inside, okay? So that will uh, increase the uh, more nutritional content of it. And as far as the, see, the, what you are talking about is the. Uh, 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 fortified grain itself okay during the during the uh, agriculture this one itself what we do but uh, dr abhi what I, what i just told you is you see now when we when we develop such varieties and all where whether the farmers will be really uh, i mean going to cultivate because i told you the concern for farmers is the yield and all okay health and all it can be always i told you there are fortification processes there are the choices of food as that foods and all of course, this solution is available and all, but we, when we talk of milling and all, or processing of wheat and all, it's very huge industry. I told you the minimum industry is, is 100 million, sorry, 100 tons per day and all. So to get this kind of wheat and that cost and all will be always a challenging process, uh, challenging uh, whatever the uh, step. And I told you the fortification, which is widely used and which is uh, from decades altogether, not just in India, Globally, it is a tried and tested and very successfully done. And of course, with the help of these NGOs like um, Fortify Health or GAIN, which are there, which have their wings throughout the different countries, right from Africa to any other continents and all. So, of course, what you have said is there, but the, 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 there are there are limitations because of the capacities. I should say that. While baking ATA does not uh, uh, like maida. Is it gluten content? The reason. Uh, Dr. Jayanti, that's what I told you. Now, when we make uh, bread uh, out of atta, I told you atta contains the bran, okay? And in bread, when you make bread out of flour, what we do for it is, uh, and the bread process contains of mixing uh, the dough, which will be added with the yeast and all, and this yeast will act on the uh, sugar content or carbohydrates or rather, and produce the gas, okay? And this gas has to be, this CO2 gas has to be trapped in the gluten network, okay? If there is bran, like it will be there in ATA. What will happen? It will cut the cut the gluten network, and your gas will not be or CO2 gas will not be will not be trapped in that gluten network, and that is the reason we don't get the low volume of that. 
so for that reason only most of whatever bread we make we make uh, from the maida of course there are atta breads and all but there in the, the 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 formulation has to be little bit uh, changed and there are some additives what we have to add there but at home maida uh, bread is what and of course atta bread uh, if you are looking only for uh, uh, nutrition uh, low volume should not matter to you you can always go ahead and make bread out of atta what you can do is just just replace some of the atta and you add extra some maida to it at home if you are making making it uh, what you do is use atta as the base material and you add some quantum and or rather replace some of atta with maida so that what happens because this maida is having uh, higher gluten content right so it will help you to, you can just try this dr jayanti thank you sir yes ma'am okay so dear participant yes, does anyone have any questions write in chat box Okay. Thank you very much, sir, for this informative session. Like uh, different wheat varieties for different uh, uh, bakery products like bread, biscuits, chapati, morphology of wheat, current status of wheat production. methods of wheat milling how bran and uh, endosperm is separated atta manufacturing fortification of atta and different uh, uh, new atta trends future of atta industry so these all information is uh, very informative for us uh, once upon uh, i uh, on the hop up department of technology shiva university kolapur uh, i am very much thankful to you sir so there is uh, one more question uh, from one participant do gluten free wheat exist uh, no dr nagapurna actually that's what that is the beauty of wheat uh, gluten actually of course gluten free I, i can say there is no gluten in wheat right i told you there are gluten free protein in wheat okay but that is the issue now uh, in wheat there are four proteins actually yeah, one is albumin globulin gliadin and gluten okay these are the four uh, proteins which are there in wheat okay so we cannot i mean uh, because that is genetic that is how it should be right uh, and of course gluten uh, gluten forming proteins are 80% and uh, other protein gliadin and gluten which are water soluble and all those are only 20% so i can to answer to your question is no sir no gluten free wheat doesn't exist the gluten conditioning process is this process help to improve nutritional quality doctor sapna no it will not help to improve the nutritional quality it will just help to Toughen the bran and mellow down the endosperm. It has got nothing with the nutritional uh, quality. Uh, any specific case of standard for GM, uh, Dr. Muske, Sachin, uh, I, I told you, I, I, I apologize. I just, I don't take anything on GM wheat. Uh, I'm sorry for this. Mixture of wheat, atta, and herbal powder. In which category can it be marketed? Uh, 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 Dr. Sudhir, I think it can be branded. It can be marketed in a proprietary food market. we can uh, market you can uh, mix herbal powder into atta but we cannot market it as atta you have to give a certain name and it, it should be a proprietary food we cannot market it as a generic uh, product uh, yes yeah yes sir dr irana <laughs> is there any question still you know want to ask question yeah the some time thank you uh, sir uh, thank you very much for accepting our uh, invitation most importantly uh, because of that one all the participants can gain the much information because you are there last 10 20 years you were there at, at national level or international level with respect to milling you have the very uh, high level of the knowledge so that will be helpful to our participants so i am very much thankful to for uh, for this uh, nice lecture sir Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure Thank you. is mine. Look forward for all the collaborations further. And you are yes. any one of you are always welcome to CFTRI. You can and any questions, not just here. Any questions you can my email can be shared, sir. Uh, Dr. Irana, uh, you yeah, can yeah. share me. any questions. I am always open. Uh, of course, don't share my uh, phone number otherwise. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 that will not. <laughs> any uh, this one uh, you can ask uh, through the email. I will uh, definitely go to possible extend whatever my ability. I will try to. So thank, thank you, you very much. Sir. So thank you for patient listening. All of you. Thank you, sir. thank you. Sir. So participants, we will meet for the next lecture at twelve uh, twelve noon. Okay. See you soon. Mm -hmm. So right now it will be ended, and we will again come by twelve noon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Thank you.